This week I made a board with some different geometry than I usually put on a board or design into a board. So normally my boards look like this one, more or less. Basically there's a kick nose, a kick tail, usually mine are symmetrical so they're the same. And then there's just straight concave running down the middle. And I skated a board like a year and a half ago. It was a long board and it had rocker, which is kind of like a concave perpendicular to the normal concave. So the board with boards with rocker drop down in the middle. So they're kind of like that. Uh, the opposite of rocker is camber where they bow up in the middle. So this board had some rocker and it also had wheel flares and wheel flares are basically uh, curves in the, in the board right above the wheel, sort of like a steeper concave right where the wheels specifically are so that there's extra clearance room and it affects the top of the board too because it's bent into the board as opposed to wheel wells, which are carved out pieces of the board where the wheels are. So this long board I had skated had rocker and wheel flares, and it was the first board I could really do a decent 360 flip on. I can't actually do good 360 flips on regular boards. I usually do 360 under flips, which look like 360 flips, but they're not the same trick. I do them all with my, I do them all with my back foot instead of having my front foot do the kick flipping part. So it's been a little frustrating for me not being able to do <laughs> regular 360 flips. And so I thought I would maybe try and see if there was some magic in the wheel wells and the rocker in that longboard and if I put those features into a regular shortboard would it still be the same. Now I know there's a lot of other things with that longboard that I didn't try and put into my shortboard. Obviously the overall size was totally different. The kick tail and kick nose lengths were totally different. Totally different wheels and everything but I thought it'd be fun to make a board with some rocker and some flares, so I did it. I also changed up some other design parameters when I was creating this board. So this board has a quarter inch of rocker, which means that the middle of the board drops down a quarter of an inch from where the kick nose and kick tail are and it has wheel flares that come up to, I wanna say I made it around a half inch was the design and then three eighths of a drop in the middle. So the concave drop at the wheel flares was about a half inch and the concave drop in the center of the board was about three eighths of an inch. The kick tail and the kick nose are the same like I usually make them though I reduced the angle and tightened the kick radius from the board, the design I would normally skate. So the new kick angles were 19 degrees, which is one degree less than I normally skate, and the new kick radius was five inches, which is about, normally I skate a board that has a nine inch kick radius. Most recently I've been skating this one though, the steep one, and it is kind of growing on me. And this one I think had a five inch kick radius and 21 degree kicks and a half inch concave drop across the entire board. In addition to those changes, I also adjusted the wheelbase, which I've like never done on a board I've made for myself. My first board I made was 14 inches and I really haven't changed that. I think I redrilled a, wheel, a wheelbase once just to experiment, but because the mold wasn't made for a 14 inch wheelbase, it just felt a little off. So I designed this for a 14 and a half inch wheelbase 
and I made the width of this board eight and a half inches, which is an eighth of an inch wider than normal. So you can see I'm kind of trying to make it just a little bit bigger than I normally would. So <laughs> that was my attempt at trying to make it a little bit more like a long board to see if this would help me 360 flip. But there was also some other things I thought would be interesting about putting, putting rocker and wheel flares on a board. So those were the main changes I made to the design and I designed it using Onshape, which is a browser-based 3D modeling software. And I also created the mold file from the skateboard file. And I took that 3D mold file and gave it to a CNC machine to make the mold. I started marking up a foam block like I was gonna make this by hand and I just realized that for the precision I wanted on this and the complex of geometry, it was gonna be a lot easier just to make it on the CNC machine than make it by hand, even though I do enjoy hand shaping a mold. So in the interest of time and precision, I switched to the CNC machine. And once the machine finished the mold, I did the glue up. I did this glue up in two stages because I wasn't sure how much time it was gonna take me to clamp the vacuum bag because the vacuum bag alone can't provide enough pressure to make the sharp bends in the wood, especially all seven plies at once. So I knew I was gonna to need to add clamps where the wheel flares are in order to get the wood to bend exactly to the mold. Now it takes additional time for me to clamp the wood down and I'm already cutting it close with the working time of the glue, meaning that the glue starts to dry about the time I get the board in the bag. So any extra time it takes to clamp and get into the final position is gonna be kind of too late or I was worried it might be too late in the process because I hadn't done this before. So just to eliminate that risk, I wanted to split the layup into two segments. And the first segment I did four plies of veneers. I got the board glued up and in there in time, clamped it all down, came back two days later to do the second layup. I think it was two days, at least 24 hours. You'd wanna to wait to do the second stage. And did the same exact thing did not move the board on the mold at all because then it would, if I did that, the next time I vacuumed it, the board might try and be pressed to a different spot on the mold. So you have to be really careful when you are moving that board for the second layup, not to adjust it at all on the mold. So after I finished that and did the glue up, I made the board like I would normally make any other board I have been recently using the laser to engrave the template or the profile of the skateboard on the uncut deck, which helps create a more precise cutout and cut the board out, drilled the holes, sanded it smooth, clear coated it and started skating it.
you can see it has a drop right here in the middle and it's got some flares right here where the wheels are. The way I found the location of the flares was by looking where I had wheel bite on my other boards because there's always usually a little burn mark from where your wheel hits the board. So you can see like this one has a little wheel bite there. So I just, when I was designing, I made it so that the peak of the wheel well occurred around this area on the board. And I really liked the wood grain on this, so I didn't do any graphic or anything. I just wanted to start scanning it as soon as possible and leave it its natural finish. I did some custom laser cut grip tape, spray painted the grip tape. I've gotten two sessions in on the board so far. And first, I noticed the wheel wells. I really like having those because I don't feel like I'm getting wheel bite as easily as I was before, which is what I kind of expected. As for the rocker, I don't actually notice that much of a difference yet. I'm not sure how that might be affecting it, how that might be affecting the way the board skates, but I don't feel like it's had really a negative impact on anything. There's a lot of other features of the board I'm not used to yet as well, like the added wheelbase and the extended width. So I'm not sure what to attribute to everything. Also, this has a true radial concave because it was made on that CNC mold. Usually my concave is a little bit more, it's like a mix between radial and flat cave or tub concave, which would be flat in the center and then ramps on the side. This is really a true arc, a true uh, radius. Unfortunately, it does not feel like it improved my 360 flips. I still am struggling with those. <laughs> so I guess I'll just stick with 360 underflips for now until I figure out how to make these happen otherwise. And I think that's about it. This board is pretty fun to, to skate. It's different. It's got nice little pockets where the wheel wells are right before my nose and tail to kind of catch my feet. This board was a fun board to design, build, and skate. And if you have the option of experimenting with board shapes, I definitely recommend it because I'm learning a lot about how the shapes of boards affect how I skate. And I'm working on trying to hone in on what is the best board for me and what's gonna help me skate at my best most consistently. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions about this shape, I know I didn't talk too much about specifics, feel free to leave those in the comments and I'll do my best to answer those. Also, check out the forums on opensourceboards.com. You can talk about uh, skateboard design, construction, and performance there. Anyways, I hope this has helped you or inspired you to maybe try something new and have fun skating.